You've also announced your candidacy for RNC co-chair with Ronna McDaniel uh, announced that she's stepping down. Thank God, finally. Sorry, it's my words, <laughs> not hers. OK, um, but uh, but there are a lot of people who are like, well, but do we want someone that's within the family? And I'm like, I think we need someone who's just willing to say I'm going to burn the whole place to the ground and start, uh, you know, from total refresh. So tell everyone about what your vision is yeah. for the RNC. Well, I, we don't have time to fully burn it down because well, we've got fair. an election to win on that's November 5th. Point. Um, so listen, I this is a position for which I never imagined I'd run, but I also never imagined our country would be in such a bad spot. We really are in dire straits. We really have a must win election on November 5th. And the reality is you cannot win a presidential election without the Republican National Committee. They go hand in hand. You need their support to do it. You need their fundraising and their apparatus all across the country to do it. And so um, I think that the keys here are going to be changing our approach at elections. Because listen, as conservatives, I get it. We want one day, we want paper ballots, we want voter ID everywhere, but we don't live in that day right now. And the way we get to that spot is electing President Donald Trump, taking back the Senate and expanding our lead in the House. So we can actually make those substantive changes and elections will be safer, more transparent. We all feel better about them. Right now, what do we need to do? We need to make sure that early voting is something we are talking about as conservatives. The first day early voting starts in your state, wherever you are in this country, get out and vote. Then you take someone with you every day up until election day to vote. We need banked votes so that we are not going into election day at a deficit. Ballot harvesting everywhere it is legal across this country. These are things that we've never done before as Republicans or the party has never attempted to do. We're going to start doing them. We are also going to have, and I will give credit to the RNC already, they started doing this, trained poll watchers. These are people mm -hmm. who can physically handle the ballots. They can count how many ballots are coming into a location, how many are going out, so we don't have miraculous suitcases full of ballots <laughs> showing up after or on election day. Um, and so that's the vision. Look, we have a lot of work to do. We need to reassess Establish trust in this entity, the RNC, which is why a Trump family member being there, okay. you can you can you better believe that I'm going to be watching every penny yep. and ensuring it goes to causes we care about. Yeah. Would you consider working with Scott Pressler? Who I think been... Scott Pressler's is amazing. Right. I think he has done what he's done for voter registration is incredible. I want to put him in charge of our legal ballot harvesting amazing. operation. That's, amazing. That's my number one guy. I 100%. love that. Yeah. Because for so long, he had been completely overlooked by yeah. the RNC. And he was the one that was out there doing all the hard what work. What a rock star. That yeah. kind of energy is what it's going to take to win. The grassroots people like Scott Pressler, we need to tap into that. Because, again, we don't, have, we don't have a lot of time. And look at the Democrats. We know what they have. They have the whole me media apparatus yep. behind them, right? Yep. That's basically their marketing arm. They, we know that they've been slippery in elections before. I'll put it nicely. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be their first rodeo. So we've got to play the game even better than they are. I love the idea of Scott Pressler. Absolutely. You know, you and I talked recently on my show about is there any salvation for the RNC? And we kicked around some different ideas and options and what it would take. So if, if you, let's say you and Scott, in a perfect example, in my mind, you, you guys take the helm. You guys are in there. How much has to kind of be rooted out in terms of the darkness and the corruption? Or with eight months until November... How quickly are you up and running that this thing is effective again? Yeah. Well, listen, we're going to kind of take a look at everything. Uh, the vote is the 8th, Friday. So assuming, you know, I am elected co-chair, we've got to check out every vendor that the RNC is using. We've got to check out all the, the staff mm -hmm. there. We really have a lot to, to cover, it, of course, in a small amount of time, but... I do think we're going to have an effective operation. Michael Watley, who is poised to take over as chair uh, when Rana steps down, is an amazing guy. This is a guy who was the GOP chair in the state of North Carolina, my home state. That is one of the few states in 2020 where you did not have a lot of questions about transparency of the election. We didn't have a lot of funny business going on, and it's because he had 500-plus lawyers on Election Day ready to go. They were staged at polling locations, and they were ready to call out anything that looked a little fishy to them. Mm -hmm. That's also something we're going to have to do uh, nationwide and in every key swing state across this country. Yeah, that's interesting. So 
Nikki Haley just recently over the weekend, she's bragging because she finally won her first primary Bless in D.C. Heart. Bless her heart. Really, I'm like, that's not something to brag about that you won in the swamp. Like, that should tell us all we need to know about Correct. you. Um, but she also, uh, over the weekend after this, Big win, Nikki. Uh, she resisted agreeing that she would honor the pledge that she signed previously that she agreed to to support the Republican nominee. Here's some of that clip. You did sign a pledge, an RNC pledge, yeah. to support the eventual nominee. Do you still feel bound by that pledge? I have always said that I have serious concerns about Donald Trump. I have even more concerns about Joe Biden. So is that a no? Are you bound by the RNC pledge? I've the RNC pledge, I mean, at the time of the debate, we had to take it to where would you support the nominee? And you had to, in order to get on that debate stage, you said yes. The RNC is now not the same RNC. Now it's So you're no Trump's longer bound by that pledge? Yes. No, I think I'll make what decision I want to make, but that's not something I'm thinking about. And I think that while y'all think about that, I'm looking at the fact that we had thousands of people in Virginia. We're headed to North Carolina. We're going to continue to go to Vermont and Maine and all these states to go and show people that there is a path forward. And so I don't look at what ifs. I look but at how do we continue the conversation. <laughs> but it's a pledge. Yeah. I, I'm like, I. but so you're admitting to people that they can't trust you because you just said yourself, well, I only signed it to get on stage, but I didn't actually mean it. Yeah. Well, isn't it Gavin Newsom who said that she was like the biggest, the best talking head for the Democrats or something? <laughs> like she was really doing them a solid there you go. I mean, look, this this woman, and I do say bless her heart, and everyone from North Carolina <laughs> knows what yes, that means, and so I think y'all know in Texas, Texas yes. what that means as well. There is no path to becoming the Republican nominee for president for Nikki Haley. So a lot of people say, what is this woman doing? Why are you still in this? Why are you accepting donations? Why are you using money that could go towards what we need to actually focus on, beating Joe Biden, mm -hmm. taking back the White House, giving this country back to the people on November 5th. What is she doing? And a lot of people say, well, she must be banking on the least democratic thing possible happening, which is that one of these indictments, mm -hmm. one of these exactly. phony, bogus mm -hmm. indictments against Donald Trump actually takes him out of the race and then, oh, she could slip in. I will say, I've said this before, I'll say it again, any person who is not standing up in the face of that and calling it out for the communist tactic that it is should not be able to run for president, mm -hmm. including Nikki Haley. I completely agree. If you like this clip and you want to see the full episode, click here. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, come on, you know you do. Click here.